Hey YouTubers, Phoenix Talon back with you again in Creativeverse for another tutorial. So what are we going to be looking at today? How about the number comparison gate? Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and take a look at that. And you can't look at a number comparison gate unless you look at its friend, the number pad. Yes, we're going to go ahead and cover both those. And we're probably going to get into a logic gate or two. And maybe a pressure plate or two. A couple of doors. And oh, yeah, that's probably about it. So... If you want to go ahead and see how these things are working, go ahead and stick around. If not, you can go ahead and turn it off right now because you ain't going to affect me either way. But I hope you'll stick around and try to learn something, so stay tuned. Okay, thanks for sticking around. Okay, so we got this nice house that you've just built. You've got some doors and you've got your treasure. And you want to protect your treasure by locking your doors. Now, of course, there's a way you could do that. You could go ahead and get into your wiring tool. You need your nifty difty wiring tool, right? You go ahead and set your can interact to false, hit save, and the door is locked. But you'd have to do that every single time you wanted to get into your door. That takes forever. And no, we're not doing that. That's not smart. So what we're going to do is we're going to set some kind of combination lock. So, we'll get the number pad. Yeah, whoa, okay, but it doesn't work right now the way it is. Because if you connect that to the door, it doesn't do anything. There's no way to set a password or even get or check a password. So, that's not going to work. Let's get something called the number comparison gate. Bam, there you go. That's what we need. This is the answer. What you're going to do is first, we need to get in here and find out what makes this thing tick. So, let's press in. So it says it sends an output. That's going to be what we send to the number comparison gate. It also has an auto reset time. Now what this is, is when you set this, let's say for two seconds, it means that it's going to send out that signal that has the password or the combination for two seconds. After that time, it's going to stop sending that, making this a false or whatever statement to where it doesn't have the password anymore. And that's going to be what closes your door. So this means the door will be open for two seconds and then it will close. And then that's it. So let's go ahead and say two seconds is good because I'm slow, I'm old, and I can't get through the doors fast enough. So let's hit save. All right, next on the number comparison gate, we're going to have to drag this in down to input one. Make sure it's input one. If you don't know, you can look over here at your number comparison gate and you'll see that one is highlighted. This one as two is highlighted. So we're going to go ahead and go with one. And it put the output of this into the input of number one. Okay, so we're good so far. Now we're going to take our send from our number comparison gate and put it in each one of our doors. There you go. So we're good now. Okay, now we hit N to get into our comparison gate. We're getting the output of the number pad. We've got it set for equal, so we're going to equal something. That's one of the combinations. We'll get into these at the end of the video. Don't worry. I'll tell you all about this. Then you're going to want to go for value. We're checking a number value. And in our case, our number value is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As far as the number comparison gate is concerned, that's 12,345. That's the kind of password an idiot would have on their luggage. But, hey, you know, we don't know what kind of idiots we are. So we're going to hit save to that. Okay, so if we go here and right click and press 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can use the number pad on your keyboard or you can use number pad here. That's fine. But either way, you still got to press enter here. Press enter. It opens. Two seconds later, it closes. Great. That's what we wanted. But we've got a problem. I forgot to lock these. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So let's close them. It's a little easier. The R36 obviously changed the hitboxes a little bit on these, but that's okay. I'm sure they'll get it fixed soon. Okay. Can't interact. We're going to set to false. We know that that actually locks the door. All right. Now I can't open them. Now you know I'm not cheating. All right. Let's try it. One, two, three, four, five. Press enter. Door opens. Two seconds. Door closes. Excellent. But now we have a problem. Even if we go in there, there's no way of getting back out. That's going to be a problem. So now let's go back in here so we can open the door. And let's go ahead and open it. All right, what if we put some pressure plates in here? All right, let's go ahead and take up the grass, turn up my lawn again, and now we got some pressure plates. Now, there's two ways to do this, and the smart money is to go ahead and take the pressure plates and not link them to the doors. I know that's your gut knee-jerk reaction, to link the pressure plates directly to the door. Don't do that. 
Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a better way to do it. You're going to take over here or wherever. You're going to hide this circuit somewhere eventually. And you're going to make a gate here. You're going to go ahead and press N so you can access the interface. And you're going to turn this into an OR gate. Okay, so you got your OR gate. You're going to hit save. Now, here's what we've got to do. We need to get the send information off of here because that's going to the two doors. So hit N, go to your send, hit Control C, then hit delete. Now hit save. It shouldn't be going to the doors anymore. It's not. And send is blank. That's good. Come over here. You're going to go to your send right here, your output, and your Control V. That should match up with the doors now. Now, if you're building this straight off the bat, let's go ahead and show you what that would look like. Okay, so let's get this wood door. And wood door. There it is. Hard to see. Oh, there's the piggy. There you go. And let's go ahead and pick this up. And we might as well pick that up so you can see how it works from the beginning. Oh, go back over here. There you go. All right, so we're still going to take this from the number pad, the send from the number pad. Go to the number comparison gate. We're going to take the send from our number comparison gate. And we're going to bring it to one of the inputs of our logic gate. And we're going to turn our logic gate into an OR gate. We're going to go ahead and put our output coming from the pressure plates. Both of them will go to the same input. Okay? Both pressure plates will go to the same input. In our case, it's input one. All right, so if you can see the lines, you see those outputs are going to this input here. Number comparison gate is going to this input right here. Two different inputs, which is good. Now we're going to take our doors and we'll place those. All right, there's one. There's two. Now what we're going to do is take the output from our logic gate and we're going to put it here to this door and here to the other door. So now we've got both doors wired into our circuit. What we need to do now for our number comparison gate is go back in here because we've already cleared it out because we picked it up. It doesn't remember anything, which is probably a good thing. Now we're going to go ahead and set our password again. But remember, it has to be a value. Remember, value. Input, one, two, three, four, five. All right, equals, everything is happy. Hit save. Okay, everybody should be happy now. Let's go ahead and enter in. One, two, three, four, five. Press enter. It should open. Two seconds later, it should close. Outstanding. Wrong combination. Five, five, five. Enter. Nothing should happen. Excellent. All right, let's go see if the pressure plate works. One, two, three, four, five. All right, we got in. Woo! All right, now let's go ahead and step on the pressure plate. There it goes. Excellent. It works. So we got in, we got out. All right, and that mean, and that's all without putting your pressure plates to your door. Trust me, this is a better way, especially because what I'm about to tell you. Okay, so this is good. This is a good working locked door system. But if you enter in the wrong password, there's no way to know if you got it wrong or right other than the door didn't open. You don't know if the game's glitched. R36 has been full of them, so you don't know if this is working or not. Or what if you're somewhere far away and you want to know if somebody's getting in your stuff? Wouldn't it be great to have an indicator that says, hey, my treasure room door just opened? Yes, I think that would be a great thing. So let's go ahead and let's fix that. So we'll go ahead and pull off our bedrock walls, put in some LEDs, and I'm going to show you how to use an LED if I haven't already. I don't think I have. Go into your wiring tool, your nifty difty wiring tool. Press N to bring up the LED interface. And we're going to make a green for our uh, good, for our good door opening. We're going to drag the red to zero and the blue to zero. So that's going to give us that nice green color. Can interact. We're going to set to false because we don't want anybody turning the green light on. Come over here. We want a red for a wrong code entered. So we're going to take green, bring it all the way to zero, blue to zero, and can interact to false. Press save. So now we got a green and a red light, and I can't access either one which is good. So how do we turn on the green light? Well, there's two ways. If you only want the green light to come on when a correct code is entered, not when the door opens, but when a correct code is entered, you can pull the send from the number comparison gate and bring it up here, and it will go ahead and turn on whenever a correct code is entered. But that's not what I want. I want to know if the door is open. 
meaning if somebody uses the plates or if somebody uses the number pad. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab from your logic gate, your output from your OR gate, and you're going to bring that up to your green. So now, let's go ahead and show you. One, two, three, four, five, five, there you go. Enter. That's green. All right, then it's off and the green goes away. Let's go ahead and see if the pressure plate works. Okay, so now if I go ahead and step on the pressure plate, green light comes on. Excellent. Green light goes off. Now let's see if we enter the wrong code. Five, 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 five. And nothing happens. Okay, good. That's what we want so far. Circuit is working. Yay. Now we need another, a whole other logic gate. Blam. That one right there to go ahead and hook into our red light. So let's do that now. We're going to take the output here, put it into our input for our LED. And now we need to figure out what type of gate we need here. So let's talk about what we're doing here. When we use the number pad, it sends a number down to the number comparison gate. If it wasn't sending a number, or even if it is, but it's not a number comparison gate, it would send a true signal. So no matter what number is entered, even if it's the wrong code, it would send a true signal. It doesn't know if it's the right or wrong code, it just knows to send that true signal. So we've got a, we've got a true signal coming out of this already, so that's good. The number comparison gate only sends a true signal if the number code is correct. So now we've got something that has some exceptions here. So let's go ahead and take that send from our number pad, bring it to one side of the logic gate, bring the number comparison gate, and bring that over here to the other side of the logic gate. Now what type of logic gate do we need? Well, we need something that is only going to turn on when we have this true signal and this false signal. Mm. There's a couple of ways to do that, but in this case, it sounds like we need what? Maybe an exclusively OR gate? Yes, that's what I was thinking too. You're so smart. Look at you. So let's go ahead and do an exclusively OR gate. Because if this is false, which it is, and this is false, which it is, we want that to be false, which it is. If this is true, and this is true, that means the correct code was entered, right? Because a code was entered here for true, correct code equals true. But we want that to be false when that happens. So that means we want this to deliver true when only one of these inputs is true. Because this one will be true anytime a number is sent. This will only be true with a correct number. So there's no way that this one is going to be true without that one. Aha! So let's see if we're right. Let's try to get the correct code first. Correct code. One, two, three, four, five. Enter. Green light. Excellent. Let's try the wrong code. Five, 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 five. Red light. Two seconds. Red light goes off. Yes! Now, if you wanted to know if your treasure room was ever entered into, like, permanently, you could use something we discussed in the last video. Maybe a, oh, I don't know, a NOR SR latch? You could do that. You could set up a NOR SR latch and figure out it would be a permanent latch to show that your treasure room was entered into. My goodness. How awesome is that? Yes! The things are coming together. Okay, so we've got a very nice circuit here. Let's go ahead and test it out. One, two, three, four, five. Enter. I get into my treasure room. Yay! And I get the treasure of a block of goo. <laughs> a block of goo. That's my treasure. That's why I've worked so hard to protect is the block of goo. Yes, it's so important to me. All right, let's get out of here. Excellent, excellent. Pat yourselves on the back. You've now done something really awesome. And that is to make a locking door mechanism and an indicator that shows when it is open and when it is closed. Again, remember, if you want it just when a correct code is entered, but not when you're exiting the door, you can link the LED to the number comparison gate. If you want it to come on when it is correct code and when the door is open at any time, then you're going to link it to your OR gate. Okay, that's just a recap. All right, stay tuned with me for the next part of this video, and we're going to go ahead and get into 
all of this business right here. So stay tuned for that. Okay, if you stay tuned for this next part about the number comparison gate, we're going to go over the logic truth table for the number comparison gate. Now, you've already been through the truth tables for all the other logic gates, you know, the NAN, NOR, AND, OR, XOR, XNOR, right? Well, this is a little different. I'm not going to build an entire room over this. We're just going to go ahead and talk about them each one. So this is equals. All right, and the way this works is if we go in here with our nifty difty wiring tool, you'll go ahead and see that right now we're taking the outputs or the inputs, outputs, whatever you want to call it, from the two switches here. And it's comparing them to see if they're equal. If they are equal, it's going to deliver a true output. Okay, if they're not equal, then it's not going to deliver a true output. It'll deliver a false output. So what you can see here is you've got a false and a false. Those are equal, and that's going to be true. Now you're saying, how does this work? Well, the number comparison gate uses the number value also for true and false. False is zero, true is one. So if we go back in here, you can see what's happening. It is an event, and it's checking the two events to see which one is what. True, like I said, is going to be one, and if it's equal to a true out or another true, that's also going to be a one. All right, so this can be very powerful, but if you look at this, this doesn't look all that different from what may be an XNOR gate, exclusively not OR. Well, that's not OR, and that's not OR, so yes, exclusively not OR. Excellent. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other ones. Maybe there's another one that's pretty similar to this. All right, so here's the truth table for not equal. So if you look, not equal, um, what it's checking for is to deliver a true statement or true signal if the inputs are not equal. So false and false is equal, so it's going to give you a false. True false is not equal, so there you go, true. False true, not equal, so there you go. And true true is equal, so there's your false. Okay, so that's not equal. Now, what else does that look like? That kind of looks like the one that we just put over here. That would be what? That's right, the exclusively or. If you see, that's exclusively or. Or. So that's interesting, isn't it? I assure you, the other ones are not quite as straightforward, but they're also fun. So let's go ahead and get into those too. Okay, so here's the truth table for less than. Now, if you'll notice, it's looking to see if zero or one is less than the other. So you've got zero and zero. They're not less than anything. They're the same. So that's going to give you a false. You've got one. One is not less than zero. So that's going to give you a false. You've got zero is less than one so you've got a true and you've got one and one and they're not less than so that's a false this is important to notice because if you need something where only one input is true and the other one is false this is your answer okay this gives you one of those types of outputs if you look at it there's only one condition where this is going to be true this is good because we could have used that. Remember, I said there's a couple of ways. We could have used that over here. We could have used it to say, okay, well, if one of these is true and the other one is false, but just that one, just the number pad, then that's where we get our true output. So we could have used this if we wanted to. Just letting you know this is out there. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next one. Okay, so I know the next one on the list is less than or equal to. I skipped to greater than so that you could see how it's similar to just less than. So let's go ahead and look at that. So with greater than, you only have one input all or one output also that is true. Your output where the first one is true and the second one is false. Okay, so that's where you've got the one. So we could have used that as well. That was another option. We could have done something of that nature. Okay, but I wanted to wanted you to see how it's the same or different or, you know, very similar. Where on less than, it was with this option right here. With greater than, it's this option right here. Okay, so I want you to kind of remember these. Where you only have one, one output that's true. So go ahead and remember that because the next one is going to show you where 
all the outputs but one are in fact true. Okay, so stay tuned for that. Okay, here's the truth table for less than or equal to. So if you'll notice, when we just did greater than, this one was the only one that was on, and the rest of them were off. If you'll notice, with less than or equal to, this is the only one that's off. All the rest are on. So this is exactly the opposite of greater than. So less than or equal to is exactly the opposite of greater than, which kind of makes sense, okay? Because it is, isn't it? So there you go. So that's that option. So this also is useful in other types of circuits where you need one to be off and all the rest to be on. Okay, so let me go ahead and there's one more to show you. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so here's the truth table for greater than or equal to. And if you'll notice, one of those is off. All the rest are on. And if you'll notice which one is off, it was the same one that was true for less than, right? Because remember, less than, and that was true. This is greater than or equal to, which happens to be the opposite. So that kind of makes sense. So there you go. Those are all the different ones for the truth table for the number comparison gate. All right, YouTubers, so that's all I've got for you on number comparison gate and number pad. I hope this was useful to you. I hope it was informative, and I hope you got something out of it. Now, I'll go ahead and leave the house up, uh, but the truth table, I'm going to tear that down. It, it's not necessary. Um, I think we've gone through enough of this that you can figure out how to do this on your own, and that's great, and that's really what this is all about, is empowering you to go ahead and do these things as you need them. I just wanted you to know that it has its own truth table and you can use it. It's just like the other logic gates, only it has a very different kind of specific purpose. So I hope you were able to see that and I hope that you uh, got something out of this. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you like this, I'll continue more tutorials. Just please let me know what you'd like to see and we'll keep going with this. All right, thank you for watching. Peace.